Hi folks, Nick Sarah here for Stormtopia.com, bringing you an update on this developing nor'easter. I know the audio on this video sounds absolutely horrific, I'm sure there's tons of background noise, but I'm not recording this from my usual location, so this is sort of the best I could do for you guys. Let's take a look at the forecast memo of the nor'easter, right now moving out over Florida, heading off to the north and east, hence the name nor'easter, gathering moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic, ready to explode strong wind snow. A drought buster for New England, where severe drought is about to be busted. Here is the latest nor'easter on satellite imagery, and there's three main features that can be pointed out right now. The first one, down towards the bottom of the picture, over Florida, we have a very tight circulation beginning to develop. To the east, we have strong convection towards the middle, that is thunderstorms developing out over the warm waters of the Gulf Stream that will be coming north and dumping up to three inches of rain in some spots, and the third is available moisture over the mid-Atlantic. Now, all three are going to converge and form into a significant nor'easter, and this is essentially the impacts that you can expect from the nor'easter. As the low pressure moves north, developing right around Virginia Beach is when the, all the three of these converge. There'll be strong damaging winds on the east side, up towards New England and the mid-Atlantic, snow and a mix of rain back towards the interior portion of New England and central Pennsylvania, and just snow in western Pennsylvania and West Virginia. How much snow? Well, significant amounts. I think most of western Pennsylvania, as you can see on my snowfall accumulation map, will be ending up with snow accumulations in the 7 to 10 inch range, up to 15 inches in parts of southwest Pennsylvania, although 10 is probably more likely. Well, you're in the 10 to 15 inch range. Very tight gradient. Um, the mountains towards the bottom, maybe only a couple inches. Towards the top, maybe more like 7. So that's essentially the kind of variance that you will see. But let's talk about wind gusts, because those will be a factor. This is the wind speeds at 925 millibars. And essentially, the way things work here is what your wind speeds will be at 925 millibars will be what your gusts are at the bottom. And the bottom is us. We folk experience what happens at 925 millibars in the form of gusts. What creates gusts when there's very, very heavy rain? And you guys know there'll be about two to three inches of rain. So this is sort certainly what we'll be seeing in wind gusts here. I'll start you off by the time we make our way out to this afternoon. The low pressure hasn't quite phased yet. It's just over about Nags Head, North Carolina. Strong winds on the east side is starting to develop on the northwest side. As it moves out over the open waters of uh, the Chesapeake Bay, you can see it rapidly develops with very warm water, very strong winds to the north and east, up to 60 to 70 knots. As we go through the night, a very strong plume of wind develops on the east side. Meanwhile, rain on the west side, similar to Hurricane Irene, what you're going to end up noticing here is that the Mid-Atlantic, other than New Jersey, is largely spared, of, largely spared of the winds. That is not the case in New England. We're seeing 70 knot winds gusts coming through, and let's take a look at what my wind gusts are expected to be. That was, of course, the NAM model. I think from Rhode Island, Providence, all the way to Boston, you're looking at 65 into eastern Maine, 65 to 85 mile an hour wind gusts. I'm not playing. Lesser winds off to the west, 50 to 65 miles an hour in places like New England, 30 to 50 miles an hour in places like Pennsylvania, and a wind slot developing in central eastern Virginia. Have a good day, folks. To stay abreast of our updates, continue to tune into our Facebook page and our website, and have a great day.